So I want to talk about allowable stresses uh, for a second. Really, this is a conversation about safety. As we know, structures must be able to support or transmit load. And in order to avoid failure, they must be capable of supporting a load greater than those actually placed on the structure. This is the fundamental to engineering. Really what we're saying is that the capacity of the structure needs to be stronger than the loads being applied to it. However, there are certain challenges to this, and those come in the uncertainties. If we assume that the material properties that we've been given, for example, are exactly true, and that the loads that we're going to apply to it, or are calculating to apply to it, are exactly true, then we don't really have a problem. But there is uncertainty in all of these values. We don't actually know how many people are going to stand on the floor. We don't know exactly how strong the wind will be or how deep the snow will get. We use all sorts of methods, but we have uncertainty in these, and so we can quantify them as a probability. We also have uncertainties in our methods. Our methods are approximate in some case. They are close, but not quite uh, correct. And so there is uncertainty in the results that they provide. Material properties also have uncertainty. Even as we test them, they don't all come out the same. There is a distribution in the results that we get from our tests. Finally, even if you think about workmanship, what if they don't put it exactly where you said? So even though your engineering was absolutely perfect, if it isn't constructed perfectly, then there will be uncertainty again in how it carries load or its ability to resist load. These uncertainties mean that we can't just take our values at face value. We need to give ourselves some breathing room, if you will, to make sure that our structures are safe. One way to do this, and this is a fairly rudimentary way, we certainly have moved on from this, but what we will use for now in order to understand the concept is what we call a factor of safety. This allows us to address the uncertainty to ensure that the capacity or the actual strength is greater than the load or required strength by ensuring that our ratio is greater than one. So if we look at factor of safety is equal to actual strength over required strength, if we assign a factor of safety greater than one, we are giving ourselves room to make sure that these uncertainties are accounted for. So failure. Failure must be designed for. Failures include more than just fracture. Uh, they can include excessive deflections. There's a number of things that can cause failure. If you were designing a, an engine, for example, and you had excessive deflections or t uh, poor tolerance in the gears, it might come to the point where the gears don't mesh anymore. This is a failure, even though it hasn't exceeded the stress limits of the material. So these would be what we call service limit states. So one thing to keep in mind, or to get this idea started, is where we're going to limit the stress on the structure differently, or potentially differently, for ultimate than we would for what we call service or yield. So for our working stress, our day-to-day -day stress, we are going to say that our uh, allowable stress is our yield stress divided by a specific factor of safety assigned to that. Our ultimate stress, or the ultimate failure of the member, would take the ultimate stress and divide it by potentially a different factor of safety. This is a more extreme outcome, and so it might be that we want a higher factor of safety to protect us against this outcome and that would define a different allowable stress.